Okay. All right, folks, and we are live. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to our Van Arts webinar on its career night for animation this week. And uh, we have our lovely panel of animation peeps. We're just going to talk to shop about animation for everyone who's watching. So uh, we're just going to do a quick round of introductions. Uh, my name is Ken Preby. I'm the Communications and Student Services Manager for Van Arts. Uh, I do have a background in animation myself, but my role here tonight is mainly to help facilitate the um, conversation and the chat and the questions that will be coming in. And uh, I'm sort of here to help co-host and facilitate. So I will let the rest of our panel, starting with Patrick below me, and then have everyone just introduce themselves really quickly. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, I'm going to be co-hosting with uh, uh, Ken here. I do not have a background in animation. However, I've watched thousands of hours of animation from when I was a little kid all the way up to what I am today. So I'll have a bit of questions to ask our panelists, but I'm here at, at school. I'm the marketing manager. I'm also an instructor in broadcasting and web. And I'm looking forward to learning more about the insights our animation pros will be able to tell us. So let's go around uh, clockwise and start at the top with uh, introductions. Seth, you want to go first? Tell us uh, yeah. who you are and uh, a quick bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm Seth Lanky. I'm a rigger, an animator, uh, usually in Toon Boom. And I'm working uh, remotely from Kelowna, but I'm actually working for a studio uh, over in Halifax. And they're called Copernicus Animation Studios. Awesome. Excellent. All right. Okay. Good. Next up, Suresh. Suresh. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Suresh. I am an animator working in the frame store in Montreal. I graduated from Van Arts in 2013. I've been working since. Yay. <laughs> Excellent. All right. And then Vicky, beneath you go. Yes, uh, my name's Vicky Hedgecock. I graduated from Van Arts in 2018, and I am at MPC Montreal and uh, enjoying the snow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's a bit cold over there. Oh. Yeah. Okay, uh, last but not least, our panelist, Denver. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm Denver Bexson. <laughs> I'm a 2D animator. Um, I just got hired by Titmouse here in Vancouver, um, and I graduated from Van Arts just in 2020. And I am Excellent. envious of Vicky's snow. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. We had a little Our bit Vancouver of snow. Vancouver snows. It's melting already. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. It's melting. almost all gone. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. I, I saw I, I saw a melted snowman today. It was just the uh, scarf and uh, the toque and the, and the carrot. So, yeah. Nice. Um, okay. So, we've all got right. a bunch of people uh, in the chat room. Um, we want you to ask questions about uh, animation, whether you're dreaming of a career in animation, um, whether you're con contemplating going to school, whether you need to convince uh, your loved ones about how is it that I could be an animator? Do we actually make money from this? What are the opportunities? What are the what are the danger points? Uh, are there are there bad animators? Are there all good animators? All those questions are great. So we want to hear you ask those questions in the chat room um, while we're talking. Yep. So I'm going to kick things off with a couple of initial questions. And then we'll get it. But first, yeah. we want to show some reels from yes. the, uh, the panelists. All right. So Ken, yeah. let's hand it over to you. Do you yeah. want to show us uh, Keth, uh, sorry, Seth's reel? Sure. Let's do that. Um, yeah. And those of you who are watching in the chat as well, feel free to introduce yourself and let us know where you're watching from, too. Um, and then any questions that you guys have, we'll bring them in a little bit later. But um, First thing we'll do is we wanted to show off um, our panelists and what kind of stuff they've worked on recently with their demo reels. So Seth, here is your demo reel, which you kindly sent us. So tell us a bit about the shots we're gonna see here. Yeah, so some of this stuff is uh, kind of my own work. Some of it is uh, studio work. This is a show called Pete the Cat. Uh, we did at Yeti Farm. And I was responsible. I, I did a lot of rigging on that show um, and then moved into animation a little bit later on. Uh, this shows DNAs, um, which was prior to Pete the Cat. Also did primarily rigging. 
um, on that TV production. Um, yeah, lots, lots of fun on these shows. Um, I think it, it's, it's kind of cool to see what you can do with, with puppets. There's sometimes a stigma around um, animating with Toon Boom puppets because it, it feels limited, but you can actually get them to look really nice and, and have like a, a traditional feel, which is always fun. Cool. Is this all, this is all Harmony? Yeah. As well? Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, if you care about like the version, it was probably like Harmony 17. <laughs> um, so yeah. Nice. Okay. Good work. Very nice. Cool. Okay, cool. So uh, next we have, let's see, let's go, go down, go down the panel, go with Suresh here. All right, Suresh, what are we going to see? Uh, this is a shot from Fantastic Beast. I've always been a, a lover of Harry Potter, so wanted to be a part of the world and was happy to be part of the shot. Nice. This is a long shot. It took about six months from, from start to finish. Uh, we had to wow. design specific rigs and stuff for this one. It took a while. This is uh, Deadpool. It was a fun show. It was a really quick show, and it was fun. This is uh, Pokemon. It's going really fast. It's Jingle Jangle, the new Netflix uh, the Netflix Christmas film. That's Paddington. <gasps> Paddington. Too. Yeah, Paddington was great. I mean, um, it's a great movie, great fantastic movies again. Cool. And it's, yeah, it's, this is Jungle Book, the anti-circus Jungle Book. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and this is an animation film that I worked in Vancouver it's called Henchman. And this is... Um, uh, um, forgetting the name. Lady and the Tramp. Lady and the Tramp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lady, Lady and the Tramp. Live action now uh, for Disney Plus. Uh, this is again Henchman, and oh. um, yeah, I've worked on uh, a few animated films, mostly VFX. Uh, this is Jingle Jangle again. Um, all of these are um, hand animated. Nothing is motion captured. Uh, so that's that was fun. Wow. Uh, this again is Lady and the Tramp. Uh, Jingle Jangle again. Um, oh, this is uh, back in Vancouver. This is uh, this is um, Once Upon a Time. Oh, this yeah. is uh, the, the trolls from Frozen. They did a Frozen bit in Once Upon a Time. It's that. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. They take nice. Disney, yeah they take cool. Disney content and then they make TV series out of it. Yeah. That's oh, cool. sweet. Yeah. Wow, you've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> been fun. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna. Oh, hold on. Let me try that. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, so we got Vicky here too. Now Why this reel it? is all from one film, is it? It is. Okay. Uh, so, Call of the Wild. It's uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting having a director, uh, Chris Sanders, who made Lilo and Stitch, do oh, a movie cool. that's 3D. So mm -hmm. uh, we definitely had a lot more uh, creative freedom, I'd say. But um, MPC is definitely known for their comparing everything to reference, considering that this movie was supposed to follow Lion King. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's certain things that dogs can't do and they still want you to make them do it. And uh, nice. that was yeah. half this movie, so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was fun. There was, um, it's a lot less bloody than the actual novel called The Wild. They uh, definitely mm -hmm. disney fight it, but uh, the rigs definitely had a lot of emotion that, um, Wow. Regular dogs couldn't show, but it still helps the audience feel what's going on. Yeah. Well, not hopefully not being too scary for the kids because there are some scenes that are a little, a little dark in the movie still. Right. Oh, cool. But yeah. And this is all keyframe stuff. This is all nope. keyframe. There's yeah. one shot towards the end that had a little bit of mocap. Mm -hmm. With a uh, a digi double, we'll say that definitely was not meant to be shown. <laughs> Uh, but we had to make it work because well, when we get to there, I'll, I'll I'll explain what's going on. But mm -hmm. um, oh, right here, where he's at the club, you have to. I was told to make a dog and push him into a burning cabin. That is a digi double. That man that the dog hit into. <laughs> so oh, wow. making him look human when he was not supposed to ever really be rendered. That was that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. But yeah, definitely learned a lot. Definitely a lot of pathing that. Uh, went into it, lots of technical things that I definitely didn't know how to do, but learned. So, yeah, you know, it's a really good uh, show to learn on. Wow. On those group shots, did you animate every, like every, uh, every animal so, involved with the compositing? 
for the uh, for the dogs and the wolves, like uh, Buck when he's going to hunt the caribou. We actually had a team of six people working on that for a month. And oh, wow. uh, each person was assigned to the animals and then we kept swapping around and it was just, we finally got it. But yeah, and in the caribou, yeah. that was at least four, five different cycles. Wow. Uh, what's the word? Um, crab. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Good work. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. Okay. And then last, we have Denver's Reel from the stuff you did at here at Van Arts. Yeah, this is a pretty pretty decent example of if you decide to go here, this is probably what you'll do. Right. Um, um, so I have some shots from my um, final student film in here. Um, and then a couple of the assignments. Uh, so we have dialogue assignments and uh, it's a one assignment where you can go ham and rig if you want. I decided to because I actually really enjoy rigging in harmony. Uh -huh. um, a little bit of um, hand animation that I ended up doing for some cycles for my student film as well. Yeah. Cool. All right. Good work, guys. Sweet. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Very cool. All right. All right. So it looks like we have a lot of questions from the audience already. Yes. But, uh, did you have something you're burning to ask Patrick to kick things off? I'm just going to kick it off. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot of great questions. I saw them coming up here. Um, let's just ask a really starting frame question. What made you want to be an animator? Mm. Who wants to tackle that one first? <laughs> it was for the fame, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. Well, Denver, sweet, sweet well, Den Denver, you, were, you, were, you had the best reaction, so we'll start with Denver. <laughs> yeah, I yeah Denver know. had a reaction like, I got to I gotta come up with an answer to it. So, yeah, Denver, what got you into animation? Um, oddly enough, it was like studying history and like the history of storytelling. I attended a university before coming to Van Arts, and uh, I, was, I was primarily interested in historical storytelling. And I mostly found that animation just has this really unique way of telling stories that I just was really, really drawn to. You can get so much out of it that you sometimes can't get out of live action or still illustration. So that's having that like that emotion be carried through and bring someone along with that is is really incredible to me. That's a good answer. Storytelling. I like that. That's a great answer. Okay. The bar has been set. <laughs> All right, Vicky, Suresh, Seth, who wants to go next? Why don't um, you get into animation? Sure, I can go. Um, well, I got into animation uh, well back in India. I was studying in India at the time. Um, I knew that I didn't want to do um, engineering. I know what all I didn't want to do. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I just wanted, <laughs> I just wanted to do something creative. And, and animation um, had the creative tag attached to it. So I was like, and I like movies a lot. So I was like, okay, can get into movies through this route. That, that was the plan. But um, I, when I started studying animation, I studied everything, rigging, lighting, modeling, and everything. So I wasn't set in becoming a character animator till I actually uh, did a bouncing ball assignment for the first time. And that is when it clicked, like something clicked. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And then, I went down Denver's route of storytelling and all that happened later, but it was just love at first sight. I, I did the bouncing ball and I was like, that's it. I just want to do whatever this is. I just want to do this. And that, that led to the other okay. things. Yeah. All right. Good. Excellent. Okay. All right. Seth, well, I'm going to pick you next. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I think for me it was uh, like as a kid, I, I loved drawing cartoons and reading comic strips. And then eventually, uh, my parents introduced me to, to movies and animated movies. And it was like just mind blowing to see cartoons actually moving across the screen and uh, grew up on a, a very healthy dose of Pixar and, and Disney films. And yeah, just fell in love with the entire medium and the way of animation tells stories. And like, it's all crafted just from the ground up. And I yeah, still have a deep love for that to this day. Cool. Awesome. All right, Vicky, you've uh, had time to think. Uh, um, all right, well, I can definitely tell you where it started. I, When I was a little kid, I remember liking this boy and he was drawing. I'm like, well, I'm gonna draw. 
And I'm going to learn how to do that so I can impress them. And it didn't impress them, but I kept drawing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I was just really big into just drawing like these fantastical, fantastic, excuse me, kind of creatures and beasts and things that you can't really, you'd have to imagine it. And I remember thinking, this is cool. And then, you know, progressing a little bit. And I saw it was a film and it was called Nine by mm. Shane or Shan, Shane Acker, I think it was his name. Yeah. And I remember seeing it, I'm like, holy cow, look at this this world this th that they've created. And I mean, it did okay, but I still thought the characters were beautiful and it was haunting and it's, you know, not necessarily happy ending, but it still was a world that was crafted that no one had imagined before. And then um, I think the, the final nail in the coffin was when I saw Life of Pi and it was the whale mm. scene going through the plankton that glue and it like it popped out of the water and i just remember like crying i'm like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this so uh yeah here i am <laughs> you know getting back to your original reason you're not the first person to decide to change their life just to impress somebody else of the other sex that they have a crush on so <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's like one out of every five we're, we're artists you know we take what we can get right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that's that's great. It shows a variety of background and also some uh, similarities too, and maybe it connects with some of the people that are watching, and they don't feel as as they're the old, only one that's alone there that you know loves something to do with animation. Um, okay, so there's a lot of questions here. I yep. want to go to like one of the earlier ones. So, Ken, can you grab one from the beginning and mm, yeah, see what, uh, what answers we can get from our panelists? Okay, so I think we're going to start with this one. Uh, since we are in the middle of the pandemic now, so how mm. has the pandemic affected being able to get a job in these? In this is a good question, actually. It's a good. Uh, it's I think it'll be more. Yeah, least, and more possible to get jobs that are work from home. Yeah. Well, it didn't affect Denver getting a job, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, Denver, you came right out of, of, of school. You're the, you're the one with, with the um, uh, most new to the industry. So you just graduated last September, right? Yeah. Okay, and now you're working at uh, Titmouse in Vancouver. So how long was that between leaving school and getting the job? Was that six months or less or around there? Um. Well, I, I pretty much started looking like maybe like two weeks after the day I graduated. Um, and it, it was only like, I applied to maybe three or four places before Titmouse got back to me. And that was in November. So it was really, really quick. Um, okay. Like, honestly, the process to applying to the major, at least the majority of the studios, as I understand it, is pretty much has always been digitally or online. Um, and the interview was, was pretty much the same as any interview I've had in person. So um, it didn't seem to, to hold me back too much. <laughs> was there was there the opportunity for you to ask questions or see more of the inside of the studio and get an idea of what the culture was like for, for your position about about uh, Titmouse? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, not really. I mean, I got a pretty good idea based off of who I was talking to. I was talking to the director and one of our, uh, our line producer. So they seemed honestly really, really kind and really supportive people. And once I got into it and started interacting more with my um, my team, everyone was overall very um, kind and supportive and always like, hey, if you need me, holler. Um, so it's it's you can't always tell from that. But. Yeah, but for was, you, it worked out very or it's yeah, has, it worked out, it worked out well. well. <laughs> mm -hmm. OK, all right. That's cool. Um, the other part of the question that he was asking was, do you think it's more possible to get jobs that are work from home? Yeah, I, I would, I would like to think that the answer is a very big yes right now, but you are working in the industry. You tell me, what do you think? It's easier to yeah. get the job from home? Um, easier, eh, uh, maybe, maybe not. I'm not too sure. I have a, I don't have experience beforehand. Yeah other than like other artistic jobs that I've had. Yeah. Well, it's a good um, question for Seth, because I think you're working remotely, right? For another yeah. studio. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, I think, definitely an opportunity that probably would have been more difficult to come by before the pandemic when everything moved remote. Right. Uh, suddenly, I think 
there's the ability for studios on the opposite side of the country to hire people uh, from BC or mm-hmm. any other province. And um, it made that significantly easier. Um, yeah. And I think uh, hopefully that, that sticks around because <laughs> more, more work for everyone is always a good thing. Yeah. yeah totally. One of the, one of the positive things to roll out of the pandemic may have been the uh, uh, speeding up of, of acceptance for working from home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We have some people on my team that are in Europe that are working oh, wow. with us and it's like, okay, we're going to have our dailies and it's like six o'clock there and it's 10 here. <laughs> Might make for some interesting conversations if uh, you're drinking coffee late at night. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, rolling along. We got another, what's another good question from up near the top there? Uh, this was from our same viewer. Oh, people should move to different certain cities. Which ones are the most recommended? <laughs> and hello from Saskatoon. There actually is. I actually visited an animation studio in Saskatoon <clears throat> once. We did have a grad who was working there back many years back now. Um, so there is animation in places you wouldn't expect there to be. But uh, but does it what matter? Would, what do you guys think? Uh, um, I I mean, if you like the work, the, the city really doesn't matter. Um, that's what that's that's my experience. Uh, mm-hmm. Between me and my wife, we have worked in Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal, and uh, in all the three cities, I mean, the city, all all of them are great. Um, it all comes down to if you're enjoying the work. Um, that that's my personal feeling. So but Montreal has an good. edge for poutine, right? Sorry, <laughs> Montreal has the edge for poutine. It does, it does, and snow. I mean, every every city has its own, you know, plus and minus. Uh, yeah. And, um, yeah. But if, sure. if if you like the job and if that's the job you want, uh, definitely the city shouldn't be an issue for you to say no to it. That that's what I feel. All, all the cities here are great. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and since since everything's gone remote, it's like you said earlier, Seth. Like it's easier to get someone. Oh, they're working in. X province, but we're in this province. It eh, doesn't matter. They're great. We'll have them anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you do run into like a tax credit issue where uh, a yeah. studio in Toronto might not want to hire someone from BC if they're working out of province. Um, but yeah, if your skill level is good enough and they love your portfolio, then they'll probably try and make it work. Okay. Cool. Excellent. All right. What's All right. We have here, Ken. All right. Let's see. We'll just go down the line. It's oh, oh I think it's just one of our uh, one of our grads, I believe. Um, if I get in Van Arts or no, press, okay. If I get in Van Arts, finish the program. Why do you apply for an internship? There are some internships. It depends on the studio. Some some studios um, have internship programs. I know Sony has one. Yeah. Um, and other other studios do. It just um, depends on the on the studio. Um, but we would rather that you finish the program and and get a job. Working. Yeah, you get yeah. a job. <laughs> like that would be the best thing to do. Like yeah. go from the in- just skip over the internship and go directly to benefits. Working. No? Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys do any interns Dental. or training programs before? No. No. Just okay. right, well, right to work to the man. Right to work. Yeah. All right. Good. So that's the short answer there. Here's a good question. What do you do to improve your sense of animation? Oh. All right. Who wants to tackle this one? <laughs> Practice. I was about to say, <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like do that's, it over yeah. and over. That's, yeah. that's literally, that's the only way. I, yeah. I, I mean, show it to people. Um, Practice and show it to people. That, that's it. Just keep doing it. That's, mm-hmm. that's the only way. Mm-hmm. A dedicated practice is, is good. You you definitely want to, I would recommend like, oh, I, I'm not so good at lead and follow. I'm going to do some dedicated animation to studying lead and follow or overshoot, settle, and mm-hmm. pick individual pieces and then bring them all together. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, please go ahead. I, I, at least for my thing, it's just tons of, I, I catch myself like looking at, we usually keep a mirror by our desk. Just looking at myself and making expressions and stuff and like how goofy or extreme can i make this and then i'm like okay i'm gonna make it nice and extreme and they're gonna tell me to tone it down because it's just how it goes but uh stuff like that or storyboarding out your idea for maybe a shot that is still 
very rough layout and you're just like oh here's an idea and then they're like no that's ridiculous and then you don't you keep trying <laughs> until they find something that you like but it definitely helps uh plan your motion compared to just jumping into it head first without a plan you definitely want to plan yeah mm -hmm. and if you're starting out um it'll be helpful for you to study if you, if you like a piece of animation or you like something that you see uh, it's good to study it, like just study it. Don't You don't have to copy it or do anything. Don't even go into Maya, just just look at it and then study it frame by frame, see what is happening and why it's happening. If you're able to understand what is happening, why it's happening, that would automatically, you'll automatically start seeing things and that would improve your sense of animation. It, it'll come with experience. You just have to train yourself to see things which you otherwise wouldn't if you're not looking properly. I it guess that's a good time. skill to, to start off with because you're so used to just being entertained by the animation. Right. And you got to start looking at it through uh, the, the craftsman's eye. Right. What was yeah. done to make this happen? Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's see. Watching from Ontario, what do you suggest I should be knowledgeable in when contemplating about going into the course? That's a very good question. That's a good question, yeah. All if right. If you could travel back in time and tell your first day at Van Art self what you should be knowledgeable about, what would what would that recommendation be? Yeah. <laughs> the graph editor. <laughs> the, gra ah. <laughs> the grad what? The, gra the, the graph, graph editor. Oh, the graph. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree. For 3D animation, at least, it would really give you an edge if you already know the software. So you're not spending time knowing the software. You're just spending all the time with the art. Mm -hmm. So that would be, for 3D animation, that would be helpful. Knowing okay. Maya would be helpful. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's good advice. Okay. Cool. All right. Get ready to do the same thing over and over again and <laughs> redo stuff. Don't be That's afraid to murder your darlings, as some artists would say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Always be improving. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any criticism is helpful. Take it. Mm -hmm. Just don't take it to heart. They're just, you know, it, it, they're helping you improve, even if it hurts to change something that you're in love with, like she was saying. It's just be humble about it. Right. Cool. All right. Um, here is a question. What are the differences between character animation for film and television and character animation for games? That's an interesting question. So I don't know if you guys have worked at, actually, Suresh, you worked at a game studio for yeah. a, Piranha Games, I think, That's if right, I remember yes. correctly. But yeah, were you yeah, doing yeah. cinematics there? Great memory. Uh, yeah, we did cinematics and trailers too, yeah. Okay. And in-game, yeah. Um, the differences is mainly uh, the amount of detail you can give. Like usually in games and, and also games, you have to do a lot of work because there are a lot of characters. So uh -huh. you do have to get the help of motion capture. You can't hand animate everything. Um, so and motion capture would automatically um, lend itself to a particular kind of animation. If you've seen games, you know what I'm talking about. It, it's um, and and depending on the budget of the games, uh, you can go with with, uh, with a lot of um, a detail. But most of the time, that's not the case. But in character animation for film and TV, there is a lot more detail. Um, that that is the big difference between games and uh, games and TV. And in in TV and films, you can hand animate everything. But in games, it's mostly motion capture. Um, that being said, nowadays a lot of uh, studios are going in for like Blizzard and Blur. A lot of those studios are going in for hand animation. But I'm just talking about the majority. Like if you, most of the studios go in for motion capture. It's just easier because they have to do a lot of work. And um, and if you're starting out, game is actually pretty good because it would get you to do a lot of different things, which you might not get the opportunity to do in TV or, uh, or films. You can do creatures, you can do vehicles, uh, jets, tanks, whatever. You can people running, falling, fighting. There's, you can do a lot in mm. a short span of time, as opposed to a film where you 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 you'll be doing like two shots a month. Uh, whereas mm -hmm. here, you should be like 20 characters in three weeks. So um, huge volume of work. So it's a great way to to start if, you, if you're new to the industry. Cool. That's what I think. All right. Uh, OK, let's see. So some of these questions are kind of crossing over and being answered by other, other answers. So um, we've kind of talked about some of this stuff already. 
Um, another question about opportunities in Montreal or Vancouver. Mm. So I don't know what you guys think of this. Like we said before, there are jobs everywhere, but some of you guys have worked in both places. So what would you right. say to that? Um, for junior, I, don't know I guess this is for junior yeah. level. I only really have experience in uh, Vancouver, right. but um, as a junior who was hired really fast, I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's proof right there. <laughs> I mean, but it also depends on uh, which studios are like where they're at in their productions. So knowing people right. really helps if you if you happen to be in that city and you know you already know some people who are animators who are riggers who are uh, comp artists whatever mm -hmm. and they can tell you like oh yeah this place is look is they're starting a production you should apply but you don't always have that so sometimes it is mm -hmm. down to just luck <laughs> yeah but all, that also helps too with with the network that you're developing with your uh, schoolmates right and i guess yeah. the workers as well too yeah absolutely when that like first couple of weeks right after graduation and in my class alone, so much of us were like, hey, where have you applied? <laughs> Are you, yeah. is this place looking, what's happening? Oh, I'm that's hearing, right. Yeah. Just really quickly, I mean, I heard this from uh, Wayne, who's our head of department earlier this week. He was telling me that um, the studios are calling up schools looking for animators right now. That there seems to be a lot of work going on in Vancouver. I don't know if that's what you're also seeing in, in Montreal too, Suresh, or, or uh, anywhere else. I mean, you guys also seeing that there's a lot of demand right now for, for I these. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, uh, I think juniors are needed in every city. I don't think one city is better than the mm -hmm. other. Yeah, um, it, mm -hmm. it, it all comes down to if you're able to move the tax credits and stuff like that. But um, the, the the demand is there in every every city. I feel. Yeah. 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 You don't even have to be in the in the same city. Yeah, right. You don't have to be, but as we said, yeah, that's true. We kind of did talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you really want poutine, and then you got to be in Montreal, so. uh, <laughs> or if you want, if you like snow. Because oh, yeah, our snow too. Sure, that's that's another thing as well. Yeah. Because everyone's kind of working from home, and um, the the entertainment industry as a whole kind of had to like narrow itself down quite a bit especially for live yeah. action because you can't have actors together in rooms talking mm -hmm. at each other um spreading germs um so <laughs> i think there was a bit of an increase in demand for animation because it's so easy to work remotely mm. and because everyone's stuck at home like oh give me entertainment please yes <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like the pandemic really helped uh, the the animation instead of the VFX, the animation industry a lot because mm -hmm. you don't have to shoot actors; you can just do everything online. So I feel like the animation just went up, and VFX is kind of stalling because that's the reality of the industry, and yeah. people can't shoot, so it's not that far. <laughs> but, <laughs> mm -hmm. but but the games, yeah, but games and animation are just it's it's, it's actually well, there's going to be a lot of, of feature film animation now. Coming yeah, up. I mean, especially because of the OTT platforms and, and you know, mm. that's original, the YouTube originals, Netflix and Amazon, Disney Plus, you, you name it. And mm -hmm. all of them are, are investing in animation. So it's the animation, it's, it's booming right now. I mean, it's always yeah. been, but right now it's it's great. It's a great time to be in this industry. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. All right, cool. So this next question is hello from Chennai, India. Uh, average working hours for an artist in the animation field. Oh, I boy. like this guy's avatar. This guy's happy. <laughs> yeah, that's he's really cool. background. He's showing off. Yeah. Are you from <laughs> Chennai, Suresh? I don't remember which which town are you from. Chennai. That's right. Oh yeah, I thought so. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so um, well, I'm, uh, um, whoever wants can take the question. For I think it's a lot. That's my answer. Yeah. How many? How many <laughs> <Yeah>. hours? <laughs> a lot. A lot's a good number. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think especially when you're starting out in the industry, um, you're still learning things like, and so expect to work a lot of overtime. Um, so definitely well over 40 hours a week. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, if you're starting an industry, it is it's healthy to not really think about the amount of hours you're putting in. It all depends on what's the hour, how much how much you're getting out of it at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, that's it, it's good for you. Right? 
Get back feet. That's better. <laughs> yeah, starting right. out has been pretty fascinating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, to, to be industry. fair, though, yeah. To be fair, though, it's not just our industry. You're starting in any industry, the mm -hmm. fashion yeah. industry, architecture, or whatever. You have to put in a lot of hours, and that's mm -hmm. that's just how it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The uh, the project I'm on, I did have to learn a new animation software for it. So the first week was like, <sighs> <laughs> wow, crunch time. <laughs> but the commute time is zero, so that's a good zero thing. Zero commute. Yeah. yeah. That, that, yes. that's that's really the commute that. is approximately yeah. five minutes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I make my tea, that's, and then I got to sit down and turn on my computer. Apartment. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, so let's see. This question is about more about modeling, but because we're we don't really teach 3D modeling a whole lot in the animation program. At Van Arts, it's all about character animation primarily. So I don't know if we can address this specifically to modeling, but in terms of preparing for an interview, like in portfolio content, um, do you guys want to maybe comment on what you prepare for an interview for an animation job? And would you think it's similar for any modelers that you're, because you guys work with modelers. I would think some of you guys um, maybe work with character builders and modelers, but would you see any difference there? Um, I think one thing, like just as a good rule of thumb, is cater your portfolio to the studio that you're applying for. Mm -hmm. So if, and this could apply for modeling as well. So if they're really cartoony or like low poly stuff, like a game studio, like cater your modeling towards that. Or if you're wanting to go to Disney, like maybe more realistic modeling. Um, but yeah, and that applies to animation as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Good answer. OK, let me find myself here again. Here we go. So do you use Maya or any other software such as Motion Builder? Well, at Van Arts, we use Maya. Yeah. Yeah, so, we use Maya for, for 3D, and then uh, it's uh, Harmony for 2D, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what are you guys using in your places of work? Uh, it's mostly Those of you in 3D. Yeah, definitely Maya. And then uh, if you're doing a little bit of tech anim, Katana, but yeah. mostly Maya. Oh, yeah. gaming, uh, gaming, they use Motion Builder and 3DS Max. But, yeah. mm. OK. Cool. All right. What classes do you feel have helped you in your studies at Van Arts? Hmm. Which courses, or did they all help you? <laughs> or did they all hurt you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, which, which courses which helped classes you the most? Hurt you the most? Yeah, maybe, yeah. That, maybe that's a better way of phrasing that. Um, all the classes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which classes did you have the most fun in? And I mean, that's going to be like a personal question, but what, what did you have? What did you really enjoy? What was the one you, you geeked out the most in, or you just felt For like, me, wow. it's the history of animation with Charles. Yes. That was yeah. the best. Uh, like, it uh, is the yeah. best. It, yeah. yeah, exactly. It is the best. Like, that's, it's unparalleled. Um, it's, I mean, to give you an example, my wife, um, well, at the time, my girlfriend was studying visual effects. She was not even in the animation department, but she used to come for the, for the history le lecture. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it was that good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and Charles covers like everything from the start, the dawn, the start all the way up. Of yeah. movies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How the how the name movies came, the the whole thing. I, that was the best. Yeah. Okay, that's a great <laughs> answer. Okay, all right. I'm looking for yeah. three more great answers now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, other than the actual harmony class that I took, how to actually learn the program, um, the life drawing classes. Mm were incredible um if you're if you're really really gung-ho about drawing which you should be as an animator um because you'll need that for planning but um i really ended up focusing on things like uh form and volume and my drawings at the beginning of like like day one and the drawings that i can produce now are like night and day and i was already yeah. kind pretty Pretty decent. Oh, to my own horn. Pretty decent at drawing before this, but like, it's flooring. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. Awesome. 
Vicky, Seth, you want to chime in, or is it just lost in a blur your time at Van Arts? <laughs> well, yeah, some of those courses have already been set, like the animation history class and life drawing. Um, I always love just like the general animation class, learning from Wayne and Charles, like just a fountain of knowledge. And there's still things that I think back to what they taught us and just like, it's soak it all in as much as you can for sure. Nice. Yeah, I don't know if they still do the storyboarding class because I know the teacher that we had left, I think, halfway through the year. Right. Uh, that, and some of yeah. you came in. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, uh, we still do story and visual language. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd say um, it definitely helps you if you have a mind that's just racing at like 100 miles per minute. You're like, oh, I have this idea. I have this idea. And you just keep going back and forth, having someone be like, calm down, pick one that's mm -hmm. reasonable, not like a motion picture by yourself. And uh, you know, draw it out, figure it out, plan as Denver was saying. Um, but besides that, uh, yeah, I, I have to say the animation history class. It was just, it was probably the most interesting class I've ever attended. MVP. Attended, but yeah. yeah. We're gonna have to and cut then, this segment out and send it to Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I learned so much about styles of animation. Like kind of, I think a lot of people when they first go into animation, they kind of love it as like animation is one big giant thing. But when you mm. when you slice it into all of the kind of like miniature movements that have mm. happened over the course of history, it's, mm -hmm. it's it can influence you in a way that you will not expect, and it's it's a delight. Yeah. And that's yeah. a good skill to have too, because it, when you when you're out there in the industry, it's not like you get to draw whatever you want. I mean, you are working at a studio, it's a job, the characters, unless you're involved in the actual designing of the characters, the characters are in a certain style, in a certain design already, and it's your job to bring them to life. So knowing where all those styles came from is, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So this is a good question from Doug Griffiths. What do I need to take in high school to assure admittance and do I need a portfolio? So this is a good opportunity to say here just really quickly that on the Van Arts website, um, of course, there is a, all the admission requirements are listed on the page under admission requirements and under 2D. There is a page that we recommend that everybody look at and um, Wayne Gilbert Put, and the animation department put this together. This kind of gives you an examples of the kinds of things that we'd be looking for in an animation portfolio. And, um, and you guys can talk about maybe what kind of high school courses you would recommend for someone who's still in high school. But we do have specific guidelines. So life drawing, location sketches, um, and things of that nature. So that is all on the Van Arts website as well. But what would you guys say for a high school student? What kind of courses should they be? Should they take? What courses do you wish you took when you were in high school? <laughs> Physics. To prepare. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah not actually. <laughs> well, it's movement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you have a media arts class that translates yeah. into, you know, art and credits and things like that, that get you closer to graduation, I guess that that would mm -hmm. be great. Um, I came from a very small town that did not have a media arts course. Um, we barely had computers. So, um, mm. but even just regular art classes are great because they'll ideally they'll teach you even like rudimentary perspective and things like that, getting that kind of yeah. stuff that like mm -hmm. technical baseline stuff, getting that foundation down is real good. You'll, right. you'll want that. I think, uh, another one I wish I took in high school which I'm really surprised I didn't because I was a little bit of a science nerd, was anatomy. <laughs> Definitely oh, uh, yeah. applying the muscles and the skeletal structure of bodies. Definitely would have helped a little bit starting out. But um, yeah, definitely look at that. Look at any kind of art, media arts courses, just anything that just is creative, I would say, that just helps you think of ideas mm -hmm. and create them. <laughs> Are there any, um, here's an interesting question, but maybe coming at it from a different angle. Are there any, uh, uh, programs in school that help you with like uh, working with a team or time management or things like that, that you wish maybe you had done more of in high school that would help you in what you're doing today? Yeah, I think most high schools have like clubs and things like that. 
if you're in high school, mm -hmm. start an animation club. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it helps you like interact with people and get ideas and bounce things off and take mm -hmm. criticism of those yeah. the things you were doing before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think too. Yeah. yeah, sorry, Ken. I think no, was about to say it was. Uh, yeah, if, if you have a film class at your high school, mm, yeah. um, it's a really good opportunity to learn about visual storytelling, uh, where to put your camera, how it influences um, the story that's on screen. I didn't take a film class, but in hindsight, I, I wish I had. Uh, oh. yeah. yeah, good. Yeah, film and drama. Drama is good too because animation is acting. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> it's just you're acting behind your character, making it move. But it is kind of like acting as well. All right. So let's see. This is a good question. How different or difficult would you say is the software learning curve for two D versus three D? Now I don't know if you have any of you guys have done both, but maybe you can tell about the learning curve for learning software. Have any of us? <laughs> <laughs> well, just within your within your medium, what's how is the software learning curve, or how was it at Van Arts when you were just using Maya for the first time, or Harmony for the first time, respectively? Yeah, uh, well, I, I would say you don't have to be intimidated by the software at all. I mean, it, it, it mm -hmm. can be overwhelming in the beginning, but but it's not it's not the hardest thing to learn. Mm -hmm. Um, animation as an art is harder, and the software is merely a tool, so you don't have to be scared of it. it, it, it if you're talking, it, maybe like in three months, you would be able to, you'll be comfortable with, you know, getting your way around the software. That's the case for Maya. Not sure about the two D uh, softwares, but in Maya, three months is it's a good time for you to, mm. yeah. Okay, that's what I feel. Yeah, honestly, same. Don't don't be too scared of Harmony. Mm. The Note yeah. View was scary, but. <laughs> you'll 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 come to love it. <laughs> Flash doesn't have a node view. All right. Yeah. On a scale of from like one to ten photoshops, how hard? <laughs> like that's a good way. Like if you know Photoshop, it's probably like a three or four harmony. <laughs> harmony is made by a different company. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. Having Although, learned Photoshop and then poking my head over people who are like kind of playing around with Harmony, Harmony looks like much more like what you see is what you get. It's it's yeah. much more a better user interface. Yeah, it's um mm -hmm. from someone who's used Photoshop for about ten years um, and then switched over to well, I could some of the some of the hot, like base hotkeys and stuff are very similar, I suppose. Okay. Um, and there's there's a lot between programs that will carry over. Like, you, it might be easier to compare Harmony to Animate. Um, so mm -hmm. if you have any um, experience in Animate, going over to Harmony is actually going to be pretty, pretty easy. Um, Harmony is pretty robust. It can do a lot of things. And you can accidentally do things that you're like, oh, what happened? Um, but a lot of those things are very easy to to remedy. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So let's see. There's a few questions that kind of relate to each other. Um, a few people asking about, uh, you know, kind of about taking the Van Arts program remotely. Um, a few questions about this. Um, I can answer this on behalf of the admissions department in terms of how the school is running right now. Um, the program is being offered in a, in a blended format. And Denver, you could speak to this as well because it kind of happened in the middle of your program. Um, you know, uh, so the way that when, when COVID hit in March of last year, um, uh, Denver's class was halfway through. And so we had to shift everything over and we've been able to make it work actually really, really well. Um, it's being offered in a blended format right now. So some classes are um, online and some of them are in class. If it's a large class, we basically will divide the class into like an A group and a B group. And so the A group comes into the classroom. 
one day, the next day they might be online while the B group comes into the classroom, just so that here on campus we can keep the numbers down and keep them manageable so we don't have crowds of students all packed in. Everybody's, you know, two meters apart. Everybody has to wear a mask when they're in class and in the halls. And that's basically the steps that we've taken as a school. Um, Denver, maybe you can speak to how that was in the, the, the second half of your program, how it worked with a blended format. Yeah, sure. Um, is there anything specific you want me to talk about? Or just um, kind of like an, I guess just experience? how like, yeah, just like learning online, um, were you still able to get as much out of the program? I think so. As, I think yeah. all of our instructors are, although not <laughs> on certain occasions, not always technically savvy. Most right. of them are. Um, <laughs> so, so in, interacting is is. I mean, we're in this day of technology. We're we're all pretty pretty good with uh, like video mm -hmm. calling and like that's that's always very active and they're always very attentive and. Um, I think the the biggest thing is making sure that you have a setup like a te mm -hmm. technological setup, which the school, if you are local, I think you guys did send out some. Stuff. We did, yeah. I mean, for some for some students that were local, like if they didn't have a setup at home, we actually did bring computers out to you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, for your group, we didn't anticipate having to do any of that. Yeah. So we had, to, we had to figure out how to make it. And I found out where everybody lives because I was delivering computers to everyone. <laughs> but, um, but as it is right now, I mean, it is animation is a very hands-on kind of a kind of a thing. So um, it's it would be um, uh, we we would want you to move to Vancouver, physically be here. Some days you can come into the school. Other days you might be at home. But it's going to be you're going to be treated like you're everybody's in the classroom, and that's how things are running now. Yeah. For us, I did TA for a bit, and right. I I did help out some students who were um, remote. Um, and it, mm -hmm. some of them did have some struggles in regards to um, getting like hardware set up and whatnot. But after we got on, uh, over that hurdle, interacting yeah. with them was basically yeah. the same. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so if you guys think back to your time at Van Arts, what was a typical day like <laughs> in the Van Arts animation program? They don't remember. I've been talking to <laughs> I don't know. else talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, all I remember is it's working all day. Right. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah. It's That's a really good question. Are you drawing? Getting, yeah. You wake up. 5% of the day, 50% yeah. of the day. Like, what do you expect? Yeah. Uh, sorry, you mean drawing? Yeah, like you, you might. Okay, so history animation, you're sitting down watching it. You're, you're yeah. listening to your instructor, right? Yeah. So, like in an average day, how much time are you spent animating, drawing? Oh, I see. Uh, well, I, I did 3D animation, and I think we. Um, it's hard to tell. I mean, it depends from from day to day, but but you get about uh, three to four hours of lab time and and four hours of teaching. I mean, at least when I was uh, when I was there. So, and then you know, it goes up and down depending on the day, but usually that's what it is. But then you're welcome to stay beyond um, beyond five or beyond six to keep using the lab, most mm -hmm. of them always did. But um, as far as class time, it's mostly four or five hours a day, yeah. Okay. Agree, disagree, panels? Yeah, that's what I remember as well. And um, like your animation instructors are usually around the classroom. So if you ever have questions um, or you want them to look at your shots, they'll, they'll be happy to come and take a peek over your shoulder and give you some critiques. and usually make your shot look better. So yeah, that's always good. Or break harmony. Yeah, <laughs> and I also feel like the, the, the first term, you, you, you attend a lot of classes, and the fourth term, you're doing a lot of lab work. Mm -hmm. So that's, and then two and three is kind of in between, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I remember, at least for, I guess, my year, the 2D and 3D programs were very tight, and we'd actually like go mm. into each other's classrooms and just take looks at our personal projects and be like, oh, that's so neat. And oh, what do you think of this idea? And we would eat lunch together and be stressed together. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, towards the end, it's a little stressful. But I mean, once you see your finished product, it's you feel good about it. It's yeah. Like, yes, mm -hmm. did it. Yeah. Yeah. 
and Van Aert is a very full course. Like it, 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 it can be hard to like do Van Aert and, and work part time. It, you, you, Van Aert would, would yeah. require all your time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that actually <laughs> relates to this question here. I'm kind of looking at the oh, questions to see if any yeah. of them relate to what you guys are already talking about, and some of them do cross over. So this is good. Um, you know, it, did any of you guys work part time while you were studying? Maybe a little bit. I did. <laughs> yeah. How did that work? Um, well, I was I worked only on the weekends, right. um, and then I stopped once ye old plague showed up. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that gave me more free time to actually dedicate time, like more time to uh, to to school. Mm -hmm. um, you should always take breaks. Um, however, you know, if you like what you're doing and you want to work on it on your weekend. Go go ham. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to burn yourself out though. Yeah, don't don't yeah, don't don't do that. Yeah. If you ain't feeling it, don't push it. Right. Yeah, it's a pretty intense program for sure. You pretty much have to eat, sleep, and breathe animation. And the nice thing is that you get to do that. And like you guys are saying, with other people who are like you. It's like I found I've heard a lot of people say, you know, when they come here, it's sort of like it's like I found my people finally, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know. It's and everybody stays in touch. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, I'm trying to get through a lot of, there's a lot of really good really good questions from our audience here. What's I'm trying to the live in Vancouver is one. I think I saw that. Right yeah. now it's not so bad. Um, yeah. It's okay. People it asking, great. Yeah. Uh, so to answer the question about what we teach at Van Art, we sort of covered this a bit before. We do teach harmony at Van Arts for the 2D stream. The way the program's set up, you guys have, you, you've heard these guys talk about how there's the 2D and the 3D and they kind of are really tight. There's a 2D stream and a 3D stream, but they start at the same time, they're running at the same time and the assignments are uh, pretty much exactly the same. It's just that the 3D are using Maya, the 2D students are using Harmony. Um, the 3D students will have courses that support what they're doing in Maya. Um, as well, which the 2D guys wouldn't have. But um, but other than that, you guys are all, they're all in the same boat. So those are those are the softwares that we teach at Van Arts. Um, so I had a question about the type of computers uh, to animate and draw. Uh, which where was that one? 752 p.m. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, you're way down. Down, down below. Oh, okay. I'm further. Yeah, okay. I'm further further down. down. Yeah. Some of these questions kind of cross over with each other, so I'm trying to make. And and if we don't, if there's any questions, folks, that we don't actually have time to get to, um, then you know we can. Um, you can always. I'll put contact info for uh, the Van Art submissions, and you can. We can always keep this conversation going. Um, I think this a couple of these questions are kind of related. So, like animation programs for beginners. And um, and there was a question about about drawing, like ways to improve your drawing. I saw this in here somewhere, um, or Clip Studio Paint for two D drawing. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on like ways to improve your drawing? And would you use? Do you recommend actually using a software to draw? Do you recommend just doing like the old school, like just having a sketchbook, keeping your drawing skills? Uh, going that way, or are there any digital tools that you guys say for a beginner that you would recommend for improving your drawing skills that make that easier? Um, personally, that. Uh, when it comes to overall improving your skill, um, I do traditional and digital media. Um, there, there are some tools that help. Um, i.e. flipping your canvas. If you're drawing faces, you're going to want to do that. You're really mm -hmm. going to want to do that. Um, <laughs> um, but honestly, just like me, that you mean, like, just going through the last couple of pages, right? Like no. Uh, so if you're using something like, uh, like a like a drawing program, i.e. Photoshop or uh, Paint Tool Sci or Krita or whatever, there's usually an option somewhere in your image where you can flip your whole canvas horizontally, which is just a really good way of making sure 
like if you're drawing a figure who is standing and you're getting you're giving like a little bit of a weight shift like you're doing a uh, a pose and you're like looking at it and you're like huh this looks a little off and you can flip the canvas and check to see if maybe you've drawn a mean lean or something <laughs> um so there there are some uh perks to having digital tools at your disposal um but everything you can do digitally well not necessarily um when you're learning to draw, all you really want to focus on is dedicated practice to fundamentals. Mm. All right. Anyone else, any drawing tips or, or uh, software tips? Yeah, it's, I'd say like if you're starting out, um, don't worry too much about the software. Like, like you can literally just pick up a, a pencil and a piece of paper and start drawing. So. Yeah, that's really what matters is just like getting that practice in. Um, if you, you know, get to a point where you do want to get a, a, a drawing tablet and upgrade your software, Photoshop's probably the best just in terms of what you see in the industry. Like that's generally what is used across the board. Um, but if you're just doing it on the side for fun, any other program like Clip Studio was mentioned uh, mm -hmm. works just fine. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Here's a question about if you guys know how to draw realistically or if you just draw cartoons. <laughs> so the 3D guys, how much do you, how often do you guys draw actually? And how does that translate to 3D? Well, <laughs> to be fair, though, 3D guys are the two kind of artists. The, the artists yeah. like myself, uh, I rely on video reference a lot, but I tape myself acting, and then I try to bring That's it to yeah. the computer. Uh, but there are also artists who come from a 2D background, and they've migrated uh -huh. to 3D. They're able to do the same thing that I'm able to do as a video reference. They're able to do it as a flip book. Uh, as, you know, they'll actually draw on my art self. So yeah. Uh, that with the three D both would work. If, if you're an artist, it's, it's great. You don't have to waste time shooting a reference. Um, but shooting a reference really gets you um, into all those little minute details that you can miss if you're trying. So, uh, so we don't draw as much. Yeah, yeah, use reference. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Reference yeah. Yeah. absolutely is reference. Yeah. Yeah. I right. do yeah. some hand drawn, tradi well, or traditional style animation. Um, for my work as well, and studying from life is 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 very 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 important. Right. Um, drawing, um, if you can draw believably, you can draw anything. Um, you, you'd, it's not always about realism; it's about just conveying. Um, can you convey weight? Can you convey emotion, form, perspective, things like that? Mm -hmm. I think that's All more right. important. Yeah. yeah, for sure. We've still got a lot of really good questions here. Maybe we can go through them like very quickly. Yeah, some of them are pretty are pretty easy. Some of them we've covered already. Um, yeah, you I can. Think... By the way, you can replay this on YouTube. Uh, or, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you came in late, you can yeah. go, go back and, and see if there's any questions that were yeah. asked earlier. This this one's actually pretty quick because you guys we showed your reels earlier, and I don't know if you guys are able to tell us what you're working on right now, whether it's a series or a film, or whatever. If you're not allowed to say, then you can you don't have to say it. But what are what are what are you working on right now? If you're able if you're able to tell us, everyone. Uh, well, I'm working on a film. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've, seen, I've seen film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm not working on a series right now. Right, we're gonna film. Yeah, but okay. All right, good. I'm, uh, anybody, working on, anybody working on TV show? Yeah, I'm currently working on uh, Curious George. I think. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. As a as a like a at the series that um, yeah or um. For TV? Yeah, TV, TV series. Nice. I can't say too much, but I, oh, I you can can't. I can allude allude to it. If anyone Better. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> there you go. You have to be in the know. You have to know what that means to <laughs> Yeah. You have to be in the know. Yeah. 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 Otherwise it won't phase you. That's right. Ah, cool. Oh. She dropped something. 
<laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Um, this question, I don't know if you guys would be able to answer this if you've done any freelance or commission side jobs, either from modeling a character or designing a character. How much do you charge? Have you guys done any freelance work on the side, either alongside your animation job or even maybe before? They've got friends got into this? coming up to them saying, can you animate me something on the side? Can oh, that happens all thing? the time. I, 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 I do more than Bob's Burgers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So Anybody I don't know, do it? Anybody do guys... any freelance? Nope. Yeah, I, I've done a little bit of freelance. And it's mm -hmm. obviously a tricky um, thing, mm -hmm. uh, how much to charge. It's a very difficult um, question to answer. Um, a good a good way to, to judge is, is to try and um, base it um, in terms of hours, the amount of hours you think it would take, and then base it in terms of hours. So just uh, mm -hmm. you could ask them in terms of how much you think you're worth per hour. And not for the whole project because you don't know how the project is going to evolve or what changes the clients would come back with. So if you just go for a fixed rate, um, it's not the best way to do it. Um, but if you go hourly, then then you can. It's it's very much in your control. And depending on if the clients are going to keep changing their minds or whatever, um, the hours are going to keep adding up as opposed to a fixed rate. So mm -hmm. going for a flexible rate is always the best way to do it. As far as how much that that really depends on the project and what you think, what the experience is and, and what kind of software you would need and, and all that. Right. But yeah, that's what, that's the only advice I could give. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good. All right. So um, I'm just going to throw just a few more questions here in because I'm being mindful of the time. Um, but I'm just going to throw in a few questions that we have here to kind of wrap things up. Um, someone had a question about the pathway to degrees in other post-secondary schools, such as Emily Carr. So, so Laura, the way that works is um, we do have pathways with other schools uh, where you can pursue further education after Van Arts. Um, and some students have done that. Emily Carr is one of them. Our, our agreement with Emily Carr is basically that you take the one-year program at Van Arts and then you would apply to Emily Carr, but you would apply through a pathway which would allow you to apply for advanced entry into year two of their four-year degree program. So then you would do three more years at, Van, at Emily Carr, rather, towards their Bachelor of Media Arts. But instead of starting from scratch, your year one it basically is your year at Van Arts. And then you would apply to go into year two, year three, year four. Um, the way it works is basically you have to come to Van Arts first. You finish the program, you graduate. And while you're here, um, I'm the sort of as part of my student services uh, duties here, I sort of um, the liaison between, we have admissions people at each of our partner uh, universities that we have a partnership with. And they're kind of the equivalent to our admissions people at Van Arts who help you to get to Van Arts. So I would help you get in touch with them, say this is the person you need to talk to. They will basically work with you on your application to Emily Carr, but not just coming out of the blue as a, as a Van Arts soon to be graduate who wants to pursue and go down that route. So that's the short answer of how that how that would work. Uh, we've had a few students that have done pathways afterwards and um, it opens up other doors that they want to do, which is great. Uh, but you know, that being said, your year at Van Arts is designed to make you job ready so you can enter the workforce right away after coming to Van Arts. But if you decide you want to go back to school at some point and maybe pursue a degree, you can do that anytime as a Van Arts graduate. It gives you a perk to do it that way. Um, quick question about Blender. Um, I don't know if Blender is used much in the industry. Do you guys 3D guys know much, heard much about Blender being used or is it mostly Maya and other things? I think it's mostly Maya and other mostly things. Mostly Maya, yeah. Blender is very, very rare, yeah. Yeah. Like, Blender is a good tool to when you're just getting started, I guess, to learn, but. There's a, at least in the States, there's a few companies I know for like uh, designing homes that may use it, but they're gonna be very, very oh, yeah. small. Very, very right. small studios. Mm -hmm. I have a couple friends in 3D and they they mostly use it for kind of their own thing. Blender's a really, really good resource for learning. And because it's very versatile, you can mm -hmm. basically use it for like independent projects because 
it's uh, crowdfunded. Yeah. Cool. Okay. A um, couple of people asking about equipment for the course. Do you need a drawing tablet or do you require personal PC laptop? So the short answer to that is no, you don't need to have your own computer necessarily. Um, you would have, because our programs are still uh, held in the classroom at Van Arts for Animation, even though it's kind of partly online, partly in the classroom, you have a dedicated workstation, a personal workstation at the school. Uh, 2D students have a tablet, which we give everyone to use. 3D students have, you know, a double monitor setup. Um, that being said, you, we do have specs that we can send out for having a computer at home so that you can remotely access for days when you might be online. Uh, you would you would need to remote either remotely access the server licenses that we have or remotely access your station at the school. There may be times when you need to do that. So we can give you recommendations for um, the kind of uh, sort of RAM you should have on a, on a personal computer. Um, so it might be good to have a personal computer just so that you can do that, but it's not necessarily, as long as you can come into the school every day, um, which you still can, uh, then you don't need to worry so much about equipment. We provide a lot of that for you. Uh, let's see. There was a question up uh, from Shayra at eight o'clock that I, I think is, it's, I mean, it's interesting, but maybe a little bit important too, about when you were in school, which is very intense. Oh, much, right, yeah. Uh, and like maybe Gosh. cry, maybe cry might be like a really hard word, but like you know, <laughs> anxious, anxiety, um, stress. I mean, yeah. all those things. But I think it's like I think it that's does a happen, question, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, especially now with everything with we're all going through. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Totally. Totally. So, how would how do you get through the stress? <laughs> Is it normal just to feel like you're in school and you're stressed, and you guys remember that, and you just got through it, or? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So the answer is yes. Okay. Yes, you yeah. cried or yes, you were stressed. But okay. Yeah. It wasn't all sad. Like a lot of it was happy tears because you finally got something working mm -hmm. after forever, and you're just like, oh, I'm gonna go sleep now. Yeah. It's the kind of it's the kind of crying when you've been up late at night and you know, and everything's happy and everything's funny. It's <laughs> it's like the crying when when Kevin Costner's playing ball with his dad. It's that type of thing. There was right. an accomplishment. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I also feel like I mean, that. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, go go on. Please. <laughs> <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> we're all too polite. Um, yeah. I mean, just like any school you go to, um, you're gonna have moments of like maybe you won't fully understand something at first. You'll need time to like process certain information. Um, things aren't always gonna be instantaneous, and you gotta just roll with the punches and tell yourself, hey you know what, it's okay to take your time and process learning or uh, deal with some other thing that might be going on. Um, just be easy on yourself. Understand mm -hmm. that you're human and you're going to feel things and that's okay. Yeah. And the other that's thing too, answer. as an instructor, tell your instructors how you're feeling. And if you feel really stressed or upset or you don't get something, you got to talk to them. The, the school here tries very hard to, you know, appreciate students' mental health. And creative people have, have a, a little harder road doing that than most people, I think. So there are, there, there, we can help you as, as a student, but there's also organizations or, um, yeah, organizations that are also here to help students that are feeling vulnerable or anxious, especially right now. Uh, there's, one, there's one called Here to Talk which we let right. all our uh, students know about. Uh, that's a free service for every BC uh, student. Um, so it's important, like you're not alone, you're not the only one. And as Denver said, like everybody learns differently. You're not gonna get some stuff sometimes and it's okay to feel bad days, you know? That's, that's mm -hmm. normal, that's the world. I've definitely cried at least once in front of every instructor in the animation department. <laughs> <laughs> no, art, art involves pain. And some right? of the instructors have cried in front of Denver too. Yeah. <laughs> I cry, you know, everybody cries in front of everybody here. It's all a big emotional fun time. So. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is that the teachers are very empathetic. They, they know where you're, where you're coming from. They know your struggle because they have been a student. They have been an animator. So they are not alien to this. So they know exactly what you're going through. And, and you just talk to them 
uh, you'll be in good hands. Uh, that's my personal experience. Mm. The, the teachers mm. are very, very empathetic. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> or you awesome. make them cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, folks. So um, I think we're sort of uh, down to the wire here with our with our time, but I think we'll sort of uh, I think a good question to kind of wrap things up here with our panelists and a couple of you guys. Uh, some of the panelists were asking about this, some people in the chat are asking for like social media handles. Those of you, our panelists, if you have any websites or social media handles that you feel like you want to share. Um, throw them into the private chat that you should see there on the right side, and then I can copy them and throw them into the comments if, if, you, if you want to. Um, feel free to go ahead and do that. And while you're doing that, that'd be the easiest way. That way I don't have to go find them. I can just like, get them some followers. Throw them in. Yeah, if you guys yeah. have art, if you have art pages or Twitter or Instagram or whatever that you'd like to get some followers from our audience, feel free. Just send that to me in the private chat and I'll throw it into our chat for our audience. While you're doing that, let's we'll wrap things up with this question with the coolest thing that you've worked on so far in your career. Seth, go first. <laughs> well, yeah, I was just thinking about it tonight. It's not been announced yet, so I can't say. Um, but I think probably other than that, um, secret project uh i i've really enjoyed beat the cat it was a, a really fun production oh, cool. um it was through uh swampy marsh who did phineas and ferb so we got to meet him and uh some other people who are just kind of legendary in in the animation industry so yeah a very fun project nice Uh, uh, for me, it's um, it's Fantastic Beast. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, so just being part of that world is everything to me. So, yeah, it, that's the coolest. Yeah, that was a crazy complex scene you pulled off. Yeah, it was it was fun. I mean, there, there was mm. a lot of help from every department with soups, leads, and then my my um, co animators, and yeah, it was uh, it was fun. <laughs> it's gratifying. Nice. Nikki, was it was it the uh, CG Harrison Ford you made for Call of the Wild? That was your favorite moment. <laughs> uh, he was actually that was never he was never CG. That was always a plate. Um, it was uh, the bad guy that was the digi devil, and I. It was my first experience with mocap, pushing a uh, a man's body into a burning building. But uh, I okay. think the coolest thing about. That project. So I worked a few. I worked on a few other ones, but not as long as that one. I was on that one for over a year. Um, was definitely just uh, working with quadrupeds compared to a uh, a human. That was definitely uh, an experience, <laughs> and it was constant. And it's a lot of pantomime acting because a dog can't talk, right? So it was just um, unless it's Lady and the Tramp, but you know, we, our dogs weren't Disney. Well, they are because Fox bought Disney or Disney bought Fox. But yeah, just ignore me. I'm 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 rambling. Quadrupeds. <laughs> yeah, quadrupeds. Yeah, quadrupeds. Those, those are fun. Fun. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Denver, you're so you're still kind of new, so I guess not really. You can't say anything about something cool, yeah, or specific. I mean, anyway. other than my student film, that was that was really cool to watch that come to life my brain baby um, oh the the the, the um, vampire in the night yeah yeah, yeah that yeah. was very fun i had a blast on like it, it being able to contribute to every single step of the way doing the the character design doing the story mm -hmm. beats and the concept work, and then like taking it all the way to backgrounds and compositing do, being a part of every step of the way in a project like that's really cool yeah um it's also very personal, but yeah. other than that, there we go. Is cool. <laughs> yeah, some kind of, some kind of that sweater. Already out, so I, I can go watch the first season. It's very funny. Okay. Sweet, right. awesome. Okay, right. well, we've been talking for eighty minutes here, so yeah. this, I knew this is going to be a fun panel, and this is gonna have lots of fun with animators they're always when i walk by the classrooms they always seem to be having a lot of fun 
<laughs> I think, it's like, you know, if you want to have a good time at Van Arts, animation seems to be the place you go. Animators are good, fun people. Yeah, not a, I don't see a lot of crying in there, so that's a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, very good at hiding it. We do that in secret, maybe yeah. so. Maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe they're they're doing it on purpose. Yeah. Um, doing it in our bathrooms in front of our mirrors, like, like, trying to draw it, like, oh, it's reference. It's reference. <laughs> reference. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe I didn't walk by during the end of terms. That was that was the. Uh, mm. um, but That's the time. I want to say thanks uh, for all of you to carve out over an hour of your time here to talk about what it's like working in animation, uh, your time at Van Arts, what it's give some, give some advice to people that are considering this as a career or starting off or whatever the case is. Um, so Seth, Suresh, Vicky, Denver, thank you very much. I hope people follow you and check out your Instagrams. I know that we have demo reels of their work also too on the Van Arts YouTube channel. So go on there and look if you're interested in seeing more stuff from these people. Um, if you're interested about animation, if you have a question that didn't get answered or you're considering this as a career, uh, contact our emissions department. We have mm -hmm. good, nice people. They're not scary. They've been declawed. Uh, they're supposed to be friendly and they can answer all the questions you have. And if you're interested about like wages or jobs or whatever, all that stuff that, that isn't as cool to talk, but it is really important to discuss, yeah. uh, they can answer your questions. Okay. Sure. Any, any final thoughts, Ken? Um, no, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Um, you guys have been all awesome. Really good questions from the audience. Our panelists are great. We're really proud of all of you guys. And for those of you watching, um, our our next our start dates for the program, of course, are in March and September every year. We are accepting applications. I put some links into the chat about to our admissions section, how to apply. Um, so as Patrick said, any questions that you have about if you're, if, if this has been exciting for you and hearing from people who are out there living it and doing it every day and, and living the animation dream, um, as it were. And, uh, you know, that if, if that's what you want to do, and if this has all been exciting, then Van Arts is a great place to start. Yeah. And we hope do it here. Come here. Yeah. Work for these guys. They're out there making things happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thanks right. again. Thanks again, panelists. Uh, wave to the crowd. Thank you very much. Uh, and for staying right. up late too in, in your time zones. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And all the best in your careers. Thanks so all much right. for having us. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so much, everyone.